welcome to my episode about security against SSL pinning bypass. Okay, so today I want to cover with you about interesting topic called SSL pinning. We're going to learn a variety of aspects and tools to give you the ability to research about SSL pinning by yourself. But first, we will talk about what is it SSL pinning in Frida. Next, we're going to learn about one vector that can help developers by protect their apps from SSL pinning bypass. Then we're going to study about race condition and another aspect of protection. As you can see here, guys, SSL pinning is a technique that we use in the client side to avoid man in the middle. The developers pin a list of trustful certificates to the client application during development and use them to compare against the server certificates during runtime. So what is it Frida? Using Frida, we are, as the hackers, inject our own script into the process of the app hook any function that we want. The great thing here is using Frida, everything happening automatic, without compilation steps or program restarts. So let's dig inside guys and see how can we use this tool. So first of all guys, let's open CMD and try to work with Frida. So the syntax of Frida is Frida-U to view all the process that's running inside the mobile. Then we will try to find our vulnerable application. And here we can see com hacker you race condition. This is the name of our application that we are going to work with. And this is the number of the process. So Frida-U-F we can mention the name of the application and dash L, we can mention the name of the script that we want to inject into the process. In Frida, we can use Python or JavaScript. For example, JavaScript, we can see here how inside our code we're trying to override trust manager okay http3 methods and go on and go on let's see what's happening in the python script so first of all we are importing frida in system packages then we have pure javascript code as we saw previous in the JavaScript code. And then in the final step, we can see how we are attaching ourselves into the specific application and we just load our script. So let's see how we can use it. I'm resuming my Frida script. Here, we're going to send information from my app to the netcat that's going to be in the AWS Amazon machine. And we can see how Burp catch the information using the script from Frida. I'm going to forward and the netcat will be established. Okay, so this is our first step to be able to understand what is it, Frida and SSL pinning. Okay, so let's talk about our first protection from bypassing the SSL pinning, guys. First of all, you have to understand that attaching yourself into a process can be done only by one entity. So as a developer, if I will create an entity that will attach 
my original app, it will block any attempt of any hacker that will try to attach my process and change it. So let's dig inside our application, guys. Let's open the resources. First of all, let's see the activities we can find here. Three activities, but first let's see our manifest. The first thing that it's going to be run when the application is going to be open is my app. My app start a service, my service. Let's see my service activity. My service, guys, will do a lot of things. One of them is run trash script. Let's see what this script contains inside it. So, first of all, let's use ADB shell and we just want to try to view the content of this script. So the goal of this script is very simple, guys. Just take the process ID of the application and attach yourself into the application. So as we can understand, this kind of protection will protect the application from trying to using Frida to hook into the process to be able to change some data. Let's see it. We will try to use Frida as we did in the previous step. But now with the new feature, of the application. We will try to send some information and we will try to catch it with BERT. As we can see guys, nothing catched with BERT by Frida trying to bypass the Trust Manager certificate. Here comes the race condition solution. I saw this kind of attack made by Roman Zykin, a researcher in Checkpoint. When someone trying to win by making very fast action, like we saw previously, your reaction as a hacker, I mean, has to be faster than the others. In other words, the hacker has to attach itself into the application before the new instance attach itself into the original process. Now I will show you how to implement it by Python script. So let's open our Python script. As we saw previously, import Frida system, our JavaScript code, but here, differently from our previous code, first we spawn another process and only then we are loading the script let's open pycharm and run our code now we will see how our verb catch the information although the protection that are hiding inside the application Voila. Probably, as you understand, it's like a game of hide and seek. Apparently, until one of the sides will find a new solution. Let's look one more time on the side of the defense. Every application running on the mobile keeps a lot of information about itself in a lot of files. One of these files is the profile system that stores kernel variables. One of these variables is called threads, which represent the number of threads in the process containing this thread. By monitoring the legal number of threads that attach to the process ID, 
and compare it to the amount of the threads can lead to disabling the normal features of the app. So now let's try to look what the number of threads before and after the attachment. So before we attach ourselves into the process of the app, we can see that the number of threads is 14. Now let's try to attach ourselves into the process of the application using Frida, of course. And now, viewing the number of the threads after the attachment, the number is greater before the attachment. The number right now is 18. So let's go to the resources of our application and let's try to understand what's happening on our application now in this step. Let's open the activities one more time and let's go to my service activity. Here we can see something different from previous. We can see here two different scripts. The first one is trace threads. Let's look the content of the script. And as we can see guys, as previously we taking the process ID and the threads using the process ID number. We take this th number of threads and we put it in the threads.txt file and then we just checking if this number greater than 14. Let's see what's happening here. I want to debug the application together with you step by step. So as we did previously, we are running the application and using the debug that are built in in the Android Studio, we can go line by line by viewing the influence of the comments on the variables. And we will see that the line variable is zero. Zero means that everything is fine and the information can be transferred to the target. But when the, the number of the threads will be more than 14, it means that someone attached to our process and the feature will be disabled. Let's see how it's happening in our app. We are pressing the send button, but nothing happening. Guys, I hope you learn a lot from this episode. Thank you very much.